Welcome to the work study orientation for the 21-22 academic year. We're very happy on behalf of the Career Center and Financial Aid to welcome you. Today, we're going to be talking about how to utilize your work study award. It is a process. So some of the steps that we'll be taking a look at is first of all, what is work study? What benefits are there of utilizing your work study award? strategies for searching for a job, actually applying for a work-study job, and then the most important part, how to get hired and actually paid. So what is work-study? Well, work-study is a program that's funded by the federal government. On our campus, it's distributed by financial aid as part of your financial aid package. It is not a grant, it is not a loan, it's an actual award that's been given to you that you will have to work for in order to um, ascertain that money. You can obtain work-study positions both on campus and off campus. We'll talk more about that further on. And again, work-study is an award that does not have to be repaid. You must work for it to receive a paycheck for the work that you have done. So what are some of the benefits of using your work-study award? Not all students are awarded work-study. So the benefits are that First of all, it can help with your educational expenses. This can be tuition, this can be books, this could be towards your rent or utilities. The second really nice part about it is that the departments that you'd be working for either on or off campus understand that you are a student and that being a student is your number one goal. So many times they're very flexible with their hours or they're willing to accommodate for midterms or finals. And the third reason that you really want to benefit from this is for some of you that might just be entering into the university, this might be the first job that you've ever had. Uh, it's a great way to build skills, to gain experience, to network, to find individuals that will be able to give you letters of recommendation in the future. So who hires our work-study students? Um, On-campus departments absolutely hire work-study. Any department can hire a work-study student. However, not every department is required to hire work study. They can hire non work study students as well. So in order for a department to hire you, they must have an approved work study job that's posted on Handshake. And we'll be talking about how to access Handshake a little later on. Off campus employers that are nonprofits can also hire our students. They enter into a contract with financial aid for the academic year. We have many, many school districts and tutoring sites that really enjoy hiring UCR students, but we have other nonprofits such as the Mission Inn Foundation, the Community Settlement House, Feeding America, just to name a, two, a few. So some of the types of positions that you'll find on work study vary. They may be data management positions, they could be customer service positions, could be administrative support, um, tutoring positions, or as I mentioned, positions that are actually serving the community in which we live. So we get this question frequently, do I know if I have work study or how do I know, or my friend has it, how do I know if I have it? So to begin with, what you would do would be to log into our web, go to the financial aid, click on award and the aid year, and that's where it's showing if you've been offered, you would either accept or you could decline the award. Um, if you have been invited to this orientation, then our records are indicating that you have been granted work study for this academic year. It's important that you use this award at some point during the year or you will lose it. So again, this is not a loan, it is not a grant, you have to work for it. And if you decide not to work for it and utilize this award, the chances are very slim that you would be granted it again next year and that that award would go to a student um, who would perhaps be using it. So here's the timeline for this year. Starting on August 23rd, students can start to view and apply for all work study positions. The actual first day that you can start is September 19th of 2021. You could start much later. You could start a position in October, November, December, or even into January or February of next year. 
However, um, the first day that students can look at jobs is the 23rd of August. And then you, while you can interview and be onboarded, you can't actually start until September 19th at the earliest. You're allowed to work up to 19 hours per week. Some departments are only requesting six or eight or 10 hours per week. And then we have winter break and spring break. And during those breaks, a student may work up to 39 hours. And by June 10th, work study ends for this academic year. We many times have students who feel that they have to start on October or August 23rd, and you do not. If you want to adjust to college life, get a feel for heavy academic load, time management, meet new friends, um, certainly take your time to adjust to college before applying for positions if you feel that's what you need. So here's a few work study reminders. Just because you were awarded work study does not mean that you are entitled to a job. It is a real job that you're going to have to apply to and to compete for. It's important when you are hired that you show up on time, that you're courteous, that you act responsibly. Even though this is called a work study job, it doesn't mean that you study while you work. Each of these departments has real time uh, work that needs to be accomplished and they're hiring you to help them and meet their goals and the university goals as well. Um, quick little reminder that even though we encourage all departments to post on Handshake, not all departments necessarily do. So if there's a department that you would like to approach and ask them if they're hiring, we would consider this self-placement and we will work with that department on how to create a work-study job for you. And uh, last reminder here is that you need to maintain at least a 2.0 GPA to qualify to utilize your work study. So make certain that you don't find yourself on academic probation if at all possible. So this next page here is an infographic. It's a step-by-step -step process of how you search for a job, how you apply for the job, what happens during the interview, and then what happens when you get hired. Uh, this infographic is available on our website in multiple places, and you may want to bookmark it or print one out because it will be a go-to reminder to walk you through each of the steps. So how do you actually find a work-study job? Earlier, I mentioned to you a tool that we use called Handshake, and all work-study approved jobs will be on Handshake. Handshake does more than work study, however. This is also the platform that we use for career fairs. We use this when employers come to campus and want to host information se sessions. It also has resources and tools available to you. So you'll want to definitely make sure that your Handshake profile is complete. When you have logged into Handshake, again, this is where you will find the work study positions. And this is really neat in that only work study students can view work study jobs. So you'll find at the tab that says jobs, click on the filters, here's a picture of it. You'll click on work study and then all of the work study jobs will populate. If for some reason you're not able to see any of these jobs, it's just a little bit of a tip that you might need to go back and accept your work study award as part of your financial aid package, as we had discussed on one of the first slides. So how do you prepare for your job search? I would say that 95% of the postings on Handshake require you to submit a resume. So if you do not have a one-page resume, the Career Center is more than happy to help you put one together. We have tools on our website on how to draft a resume, and we also have counselors uh, during express advising and or one-on-one -on -one counseling that are willing to help you make a resume. Again, I realize for some of you coming in that this might be the first resume that you've ever crafted, and that's exactly what the Career Center is here to do, is to help you with that. Your resume will include contact information, education, work experience. If you've never worked, your experience can include volunteer, campus involvement, leadership, other areas. It does not necessarily have to be paid experience. 
So once you have drafted your resume and you would like to have it looked at, again, the Career Center has both in-person and virtual counseling appointments. And we also have express career advising. The in-person appointments usually run 20 to 30 minutes. The express advising is 10 minutes. The express advising is all that you would really need to have your resume critiqued. If you have other career questions, feel free to make an appointment, but express career advising is great for resume critique. If you have concerns about interviewing, we also have tools and resources. You can meet with a counselor. Um, one of the tools that we have is called Standout and it's a mock interview tool. Um, it's within Handshake under the tab that says resources. And this is a great way to practice your interviewing skills as well. So once this next section here is actually on interviewing and then the outcome of that, which is getting hired. So when you get ready to interview, just remember to dress appropriately. You do not need to go in a really formal uh, business suit, but do take the time to put on a nice polo, a button down shirt, a nice pair of fitting pants, even though the, or you know, skirt, blouse, uh, appropriate, interview attire. While a department might let you work in normal student attire, some departments will give you a shirt or a hat or other uniform that's required to do that job. But the very first time that you show up for an interview, you are making a first impression. So just take a little extra time to make sure that you present yourself well. Read the job description and prepare any questions that you have in advance. So if something's unclear on that job description, you know, jot it down so that you can ask appropriate questions to make sure this is a good match for you as well. Um, if this interview happens to be virtual, make sure that you review the instructions and that you test your technology to make sure it's compatible. And then also to make sure that you have a nice environment with minimal distractions, again, if it is virtual. And you will find both face-to-face -face as well as virtual um, interviews for this coming year. Uh, be on time and certainly follow up with a thank you email. While we encourage all students to do this, very few do. It definitely will stand out as a committed individual if you take the time to prepare a thank you. So here's the work study hiring process, and um, I'm going to be showing you a variety of screens. It can sound very daunting, but it really is not. And again, the infographic that I shared with you earlier that you can download or pick up in our office is going to be giving you step-by-step -step instructions should you forget what we're talking about um, in order here. So. If you are getting hired on campus, you will fill out the work study new hire form. This can be found at the Career Center's website or on the work study website. You will attach a copy of your job description and your federal work study eligibility notification. Once that is done, it will move into an area with an uh, employment contract via DocuSign that you will be agreeing to and your employer will be agreeing to. And then you will wait for your supervisor to let you know the next step. This is if you're being hired on campus. If you are being hired off campus, there is one additional step. So steps one, two, and three are exactly the same. You fill out the new work study, the work study new hire form, you attach your job description and your work study eligibility notification, and it goes through a DocuSign process. If, however, you are being hired off campus, there is one additional step. You need to wait for a letter of clearance from the financial aid office before you begin working at an off-site location. A letter of clearance will be sent to you as well as to the employer. This can take up to 15 days. So please be uh, patient with the process. Here's a quick little view of what these forms look like. So this is the work study eligibility notification, which every student can get embedded within the job description on the work study website or on the Career Center, Center's website. This is a notification that lets the department know what your award is for the year. So for in this example, the student was awarded $2,000. This next sample is 
how you would submit your job description. So when you are looking for jobs on Handshake and then you're interviewed, you will take a PDF of the job that you were hired on to attach that. This is the new hire form. This is what you will initiate in order to say I was hired. So when you initiate this form, it will be asking you to upload your eligibility form as well as a copy of the job. For those that are working on campus, you will now wait for your department to give you the next set of instructions. For those that are working off campus, this is a copy of a sample letter of clearance that you will need before you can begin work at an offsite location. Yay, timesheets, that means you're getting paid. And let's take a look at this process. If you are, you will be paid bi-weekly, regardless of whether you are on campus or off campus. So every two weeks, you will receive a paycheck provided that you have worked. For on-campus departments, you will speak with your department directly in regards to their procedures and deadlines. For off-campus departments, you will be receiving instructions at the same time as you get your letter of clearance. It is important that you keep track of the hours that you work because you do not want to exceed your allocation amount. In this example, if a student was awarded $1,500 of work study and they were being paid $15 an hour, that means they'd be able to work 100 hours before their award was exhausted. What happens when your award isn't exhausted? Several things can happen. Uh, one, you can contact the financial aid office, your counselor there, to see if there's any additional funding that you can receive. It may or may not. Um, be available, but that is one step. For many of our departments, when you have exceeded your award, they still want to keep you, but instead of you being paid out of a uh, financial uh, federal work study award, they will start to be paying you out of departmental funds. If neither of those things happen, there's no additional departmental money and there's no additional award, then the Career Center is here to help you find a different part-time job that may be on or off campus locally. So many times we get asked this question about um, do taxes get taken out? Yes, they do. What are these forms that I'm being asked to fill out? So this is just a quick little know your dough. Wages are your gross wages, how much you make before deductions are taken out. It's your net pay. So it's the grand total of what you made and then Net pay is what you actually take home after any kind of state, federal, local taxes are taken out. The W-4 form is what tells employers how much money to take out towards taxes. You'll be asked to fill that out at the very beginning of your employment. The W-2 is a form that comes out once a year and you'll get the form in January and it will tell you how much you made in your prior year's wages and if you need to be doing um, federal income tax, you'll be using that form for those purposes. We do offer workshops on financial wellness. Uh, you can see the website here, you see our Thin Well, um, and that is um, an, a resource that you should take advantage of if you have any questions about your financial situation. So here's who to contact. If you have questions about your actual work study allocation and or your pay, eligibility, timesheet questions, um, those questions would go to the financial aid office. Do remember to sign up for a direct deposit. And if you don't, then all paychecks are mailed to the local address that you have on uh, within our web. If you have questions, however, about job search assistance, interview preparation, resume writing, cover letters, then the Career Center is who you need to contact. Um, we also have workshops for you to attend on skill building, resume writing, interviewing skills, et cetera. So uh, contact financial aid for any actual award questions, pay check questions. Contact the Career Center for any questions about job preparation, um, job search, or interviewing.
And here's both of our uh, websites and email addresses so that you can contact the appropriate department. A few other announcements that I'd like to make in general that I think you might find um, helpful. We are having a virtual job fair on Monday, September 20th from 11 to two. So on-campus departments and off-campus departments that are hiring students are invited to meet you. So please take the time to register at careers.ucr.edu forward slash work study fair. You will need to upload your resume into Handshake and to allow others to see your profile to ensure that it's visible to employers. So if you're interested, please log in to Handshake and RSVP to come to our work study virtual fair. Another announcement that I'd like to make is about CalFresh. And this is an opportunity for our students to get additional funds for basic needs such as food. Most all of our students who are work study eligible are, are also CalFresh eligible. So you may want to take a look at the UCR CalFresh at ucr.edu um, email or their website to find out more information. I also want to bring to your attention the Loan to Learn program. If for some reason you are not um, in possession of a laptop or you need a technology to assist you, there is a Loan to Learn program. Again, you can see the website at the bottom here, https forward slash forward slash its.ucr.edu forward slash Loan to Learn. And this is a program that our Information and Technology Services can help you find out more about. Connect with us on social media, UCR Career Ready, UCR Career Center, Higher Hand, Highlanders. We're looking forward to connecting with you, hopefully to inspire you and empower you to uh, pursue your uh, short-term and long-term career interests. So once again, as a reminder, uh, during this last year where we have had uh, uh, COVID, we, we will for the 2021-2022 year be having both in-person appointments and virtual appointments. And it would be best to visit careers.ucr.edu for the most up-to-date schedule of the times and hours for the assorted uh, opportunities we have for you to meet with us. So on behalf of Financial Aid and the Career Center, we would like to thank you very much for joining us on today's orientation. And we invite you to uh, reach out to us should you have any questions that were not covered here today.